Good morning, folks. Here comes the sun. Eruptive behavior intensified overnight as the sunspots got their first good look at Earth. We've got a top-tier run of news today as well, but today it's more relevant than usual at our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours with coronal holes south and departing, and of course the bright, angry, active region incoming over the northeastern limb. Solar wind is diminished this morning, so the big story is the solar flares. Looking close in at the sunspots, we see the core lead umbra surrounded by smaller spots from the 2 o'clock position back around to about 10 or 11 o'clock. And even though they are small, they are opposite polarity to the lead core. The close-in one near the 2 o'clock position makes this a beta delta sunspot group, and it has reached the C9.9 ceiling. Any higher into M-class range, disaster prediction app starts firing the flare alerts. Let's peek in on the larger eruptions taking place this morning in 131 angstroms. This is still ionized iron, but the shorter wavelength catches the extreme ultraviolet and even X-rays from solar flares, creating that flash effect. We're going to look next at the ionized helium. We can see that plasma is exceptionally active near and above the sunspots. In the later sequences, it does confine to the delta region near the group lead that we mentioned earlier. This far, the plasma from these larger events is not leaving the corona, Big one this morning surged an eruption through the corona ahead in rotation through Earth-facing heliographic longitudes. Eyes open for more. Tornadoes dropped in Texas yesterday. Luckily, they stayed out into open areas, and that's about the best we can hope for tonight and for the majority of this week. We have a multi-day setup for severe weather in the United States. Timestamp running along the bottom, and you can see that pretty much every night this week we have severe potential moving from the center of the country to begin and transitioning into the Gulf states towards the weekend. Eyes on your local forecasts. Let's go next to the American Geophysical Union. We're finding an excellent study of what it takes to cause a solar superstorm. It's about more than just the CME, but the density of the leading shock wave, and they occur 90% of the time during the maximum or descending phases of the sunspot cycle. Interestingly, they also denote the danger zone as being from center Earth facing and to the west, which is to the right from our view, and is where the IMF magnetically connects Earth to Sun. That is when we watch the most. Up next, another powerful paper but on a complex and unexciting topic, but which does have implications at the largest scale. Only the 11 and 22 year cycles can actually be linked to the solar dynamo. The longer cycles do not match up as perfect harmonics and indeed are not intrinsic features of the solar dynamo, which is important because the dynamo is the thing hiding the real secret of the sun, that it has a sixth gear we've never seen before. Going next to life potential in the cosmos, with arsenic breathing life discovered on Earth, it is now no longer a question as to whether or not it is possible in space. Or is it? The mechanism for the terrestrial biology to do it is to take an oxygen atom off of arsenate, making it arsenite. I'm not really sure that counts as not breathing oxygen. Folks, there are two new papers in PhysRev D, the powerhouse journal I mentioned yesterday, and they are driving again at the super heavy dark matter in the Terra electron volt range. That's thousands of protons in size and preposterous to have not been found thus far. We've been poking a bit of fun at this new notion as being both unscientific and embarrassing in its implications of the past search efforts, but don't worry folks, these scientists haven't lost their minds. You see, they aren't talking about your normal, forever missing wimp dark matter. This is different. This is minimal spin one isotriplet and moduli portal dark matter. Oh, you're using your made up names. Um, I'm Spider-Man then. Okay, true enough. If you use enough assumption and free variables, the math might work in the current paradigm, but we also see the potential motivation behind all these new pushes to find the super heavy dark matter. One of the papers says the open question demands the construction of the new super super collider that has a hundred tera electron volt power. They won't do it if the scientists don't push, and if it happens, I'd say they've got funding and work for 50 years at least. Of course, some of the best evidence for believing that motivation is the onboarding of the big dogs from Chicago. Channel veterans know all these names, but not always for great reasons. Today, they propose a hundred million tera electron volt dark matter, which is the size of a hundred billion protons. And seriously, this doesn't get much more off the wall. On the other hand, sometimes it does. For those who know my childhood best friend has a YouTube channel focused on ETs, conspiracies, occulted history, etc., I went on to Adrian's discussion video posted to Suspect Sky Channel yesterday. I am in the first part there, and we do get weird. 
website members at suspiciousobservers.org. We have long been asked for a college recommendation list for observer-minded students. This took way too long, and I'm sorry, but now it is here. And it is not overwhelming. I did figure you'd want a shorter list than what you find in U.S. News each year. Don't forget, Kat has declared this book deal is ongoing all month to celebrate my daughter's birthday. I do prefer her celestial birthday, but that's a long story for another day. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. otf.sells.com is the place to get those books. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.